Uh, we have item number two, and uh, we have that, uh, I want to say it, Mr. Mantu? Yes, sir. Is here? Yeah. Okay. We'll hold that one. Item number one would be uh, also Ms. Dela Cruz. Is no, here? No. Excuse me, please. Dela, okay, good. But Dela Cruz is replaced by that. That's number one. Excuse me. Give me the whole rundown here. Make it simple. Uh, under item one, the mayor submits uh, the appointment of Mr. Kanchan Matu to the Los Angeles Convention and Exhibition Center Authority Board of Commissioners. Great. Okay, we're going to hold that one. Item number two. That is a report, a verbal report by the general manager of the convention uh, center. Item number department. three. Uh, three is a um, continuation of the uh, tariff amendment at the port to upgrade penalties for violations of the tariff. Um, there is a, a follow-up report that was requested by this committee Great. that has been submitted. Four and five. Four is a program agreement with Daimler Truck Financial to serve as the financial services entity for the clean truck program at the port, and that is going to council today. Good. And uh, six, seven, and eight. Um, six is a foreign trade zone subzone operating agreement with Sony Electronics for operation of a subzone in uh, five separate sites uh -huh. in the cities of Carson, Los Angeles, and Linwood. The CAO has submitted a report and recommendation for approval. Great. Seven is a foreign trade zone operating agree agreement with KW International for operation of a general purpose uh, foreign trade zone warehouse and office uh, facility at um, site 4C in the city of Carson. And eight is, again, a foreign trade zone, actually a developer agreement this time, with Redlands Business Center um, to develop Site 22 in the city of Redlands um, and to market those facilities once they're built to F foreign trade zone operators. Very good. Uh, let's take item number one. Okay. Item one. Under item one, the mayor submits for council approval his appointment of Mr. Ken Chan Matu to the Los Angeles Convention and Exhibition Center Authority Board of Commissioners for a term ending on January 16th, 2011. Mr. Matu would fill the vacancy created by the resignation of Ms. Proserpina de la Cruz in July of 2008. The City Ethics Commission staff have reviewed and submitted a report on Mr. Matu's statement of economic interests. Correct. So all his work has been submitted to the uh, Ethics Commission and the clerk, etc. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Councilman. Uh, okay. How do you want me to vote? You can vote with your heart. I want to know how you want me to vote. I am not here to sway you. Oh, oh no. Good morning. Thank you for your service to the city. Tell us a little about your history and your background. Uh, I'm originally from uh, India. Uh -huh. I grew up in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. I came out to California for my master's. Uh, I worked in the film industry for about six, seven years, and uh, for the last two and a half years, I've been working as a deputy district director for Assemblymember Lloyd Levine, mm -hmm. and uh, I was recently appointed to uh, serve on this commission, and I hope to do so. Where do you live? I live in Sherman Oaks. Uh -huh. Been there about a year. Right. Uh, Good. Beautiful, as Good. you know. Now, how often have you been around the uh, convention center? Not, not as often as I Have you I been to a convention at a convention center? I have not been to a convention okay. at a convention I go to the auto show every so often. Or, uh, and how do you like that? Uh, it's interesting. I went once with uh, a guy in Hollywood who had a buddy, and his buddy was Dan Aykroyd. And so walking behind Dan Aykroyd was amazing to, uh, to see how people reacted to him because as a film figure, mm -hmm. uh, it's always great to see people enjoy something in real reality. The late, great George Harrison used to love eating on Alvera Street, as told by his sister's his sister-in-law, uh, because people wouldn't bother him, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so it's interesting when you see that. As we went through the auto show, uh, the Los Angeles Convention Center did a wonderful job in expressing uh, about this aspect of uh, the economic engine that has slowed down to almost a screeching halt. So I don't know what the auto show will do this year. It will be a big challenge. When is the auto show this year? November, so they moved it up a little earlier there. So, 
but uh, I think it's a fun sometimes for people to experience it. I hope you can walk around the facility uh, as you get into it with the dynamics of LA Live coming forth. It's very exciting. Uh, uh, that combination is going to be real important, how it plays with the convention center. Uh, it's being awarded uh, tomorrow, I believe, at 1030, the number one uh, leads. Is that a correct uh, uh, for environmental uh, reduction? Uh, and they have those solar panels which work on the side which uh, go to the west which is important so I think you'll use your own skills and I think the one thing too uh, being an international person and born in India and raised in Washington you got an outlook that will help Los Angeles because our strength comes from our diversity if we do it right so uh, I'm going to recommend approval and uh, when does this go to council? Today. Today. So and how far away is Ms. Hahn? <laughs> Too far. <laughs> Not too far. Very good. Okay, so, so, uh, what's your favorite book? What's my favorite book? Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, uh, Ender's Game. Ender's Game. Okay. Yeah. How about movies? Give me uh, movies. Yeah. Uh, let's let's see. R Rushmore. Rushmore. Rushmore by uh, yeah. Wes Anderson. Uh -huh. Are we just killing time right now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let me get. All right, hold on there. All right, good up here. Well, we'll hold right now. Uh, Mr. Sachs, if you could hold here, he's the public comment. Mr. Sachs, come up here. Next time I want you to fill out your address. Do we have your address on fire? I do not, sir. Okay, Mr. Sachs, come on up in the public comment. Can I hold my public comment No, you have it here on item number one, so I want to follow the rules, yeah. Sure, I have a public comment on number one. Yeah. Sir. I have a run, one minute public comment. Good morning, thank you. Uh, one minute. Very quickly. Uh, just curious to know from the new commissioner how, what his stance is regarding the information that just came out regarding the um, LA trade, the, the, the action at the airport with the commissioner and the, the audit by the federal government where they spent $60 million for uh, the tourist commission. Does any of that money go to the convention center? Um, the fact that the, the head of that for-profit organization sits as the chair of the airport commission and um, also just interested to know what the commissioner's uh, feeling is or uh, thoughts are about the new um, the new the new ordinance that was passed or the new uh, action that was taken by the city council regarding the signage at the convention center very good that's a good point thank you very much will you fill this card out sure. thank you uh, we're now joined by the chair of the committee, Janice Hahn. Welcome, Ms. Hahn. I thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hahn. Janice Hahn comes from the great 15th district of Los Angeles. We just took item one. Good. And we have a, a commissioner here who spoke briefly. We talked about books, music, uh, and uh, didn't get into favorite foods. Oh, we haven't done uh, a good one, no? We haven't. We're just going to do it right now. Oh, so okay. this is a gentleman who has good. a great uh, background and experience, was involved in the entertainment industry. Uh, born in India, raised in Washington, D.C., came west, lives in Sherman Oaks, and chews juicy fruit. So uh, <laughs> we're okay. Here's a good question. Mr. Sachs, who is an advocate for uh, voice, said, what do you think about these billboard concepts on the freeway? Uh, I think the, the, the number one thing we have to make sure about is the safety element. It is right, right. by the freeways and right. uh, making sure that Caltrans, which is obviously something I'm familiar with, uh, right. um, passes that says that this is a feasible thing to do. I mean, the, the money for the general fund is important, but at the same time, safety is far out. Uh, well, that's the same question I asked there. So I, uh, I recommend approval. Ms. Hahn, I turn it Well, one of the things I know you're being appointed to the authority, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, the, the financing uh, arm of the convention center. And one of the things we uh, always are talking about is the possibility of um, a mini conference center being built uh, close to LAX. I even think there's a uh, an idea uh, whose time has come for a mini conference center on the waterfront uh, down in San Pedro. I think you could we could do a lot of things in the city, kind of uh, combining uh, a cruise with the convention. And uh, we've heard before that it's really not a threat to our major convention center. It's like we're growing up baby conferences, and those those uh, organizations would be ripe for coming to our convention center when they outgrew. What do you think about that? Well, I think um, getting as many options out there for people is to bring them to LA is uh, important. If it requires maybe something in by LAX, that's great. Let's get more people coming to LA, get those, you know, 
uh, feet in hotel rooms, spending money in Los Angeles. So good. Well, we would just urge you to continue to kind of look at that and bring it forward on your agenda every now and then. Uh, we've had a feasibility study mm -hmm. done where it uh, looks like that might be something we would be interested in um, <laughs> investing in here in the city of Los Angeles. So with that, uh, we'll recommend approval we'll as long as you uh, look at that waterfront. Mini Airport one and one in the San Fernando Valley. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now I believe we're because uh, we've had a request by um, Chief Boyd of the Port Police that we take item three out of order. I believe he has a plane to catch. So uh, official business. Very good. So. Well, then, if it's official business, I say approval. Go forward. Right. All right, explain to us very briefly what this uh, amending this port tariff for our, our uh, port police means. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Council Member LaBange. Uh, this actually is a, an amendment to our tariff number four, section two, item 220. And it's actually, at the end of the day, going to serve as a benefit to the citizens, uh, although it's for uh, a somewhat ominous uh, action. It's our penalties for violation. Uh, someone's. Uh, Stop for uh, speeding in the in the harbor on a jet ski or or uh, some other maritime violation. Right now, they're all misdemeanors. Uh, it requires that the, there's a mandatory appearance in court. Uh, there's a mandatory uh, fine or bail schedule, which is also not current with the our city municipal code, uh, section 11. What we're trying to do now is conform the uh, penalties for violation with our municipal code, and at the same time. Amend the section so that uh, there's an option for infractions, and in this case, uh, a violator instead of having to go to court, be issued a citation, uh, could pay actually a lower fine uh, than what is uh, currently on the books, and uh, be able to go about his way uh, for some minor infractions that might occur. So these are mainly for violations on the water. That's correct. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Lebonge, do you have any? Yeah, is it going to a misdemeanor or going to, going to an infraction? An infraction. We're adding infractions, and we're also conforming the mixed misdemeanor section so that it conforms with right. our Right, this is what the police, if you were on the, if the street, the police did. I support it. Thank right. you very much. Right, yeah, so, so somebody would have the option to just pay the ticket yes. as opposed to showing up in court. Which would cost them more and also cost right. the city more. Right, right, so it's, it streamlines the process. Um, and where does the revenue go when people pay their fines for violations on the water? In the case of citations, the money goes to the city's general funds. Hmm. Good to know. Okay, uh, we're joined by Councilmember Rosendahl. Do you have any uh, questions on this? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, uh, we do have one public comment on item three before we vote. Uh, oh yes. Yeah, uh, Councilor oh, yes. Alvin Newman, the CEO's office. Uh, we have a. a <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was an initial original report that was received that doesn't in, uh, contain the information in the proposed report and we're asking that that uh, report be received and filed because it has some information that was corrected in the proposed report okay yes that would be the board's initial report which this committee held right because I wanted more information and I'm glad I did because the first report we had was very was much more confusing and this report is in compliance with the Los Angeles Municipal Code um, okay so we will receive and file the board's first transmittal right. and the CAO's first transmittal okay and we will approve this item correct this item includes the first two and then you want to approve the board's second transmittal and the harbors uh, department's follow-up report which came in in response to your request. Right. And the CAO's second report. Right. Whatever you just said, do I have a motion to? I move. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. So approved. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was on, I was on the right track. I, Ar Arnold, I'm sorry. You got, you got derailed. I got derailed. No injuries. Okay. Uh, just very quickly, since the. Um, Go ahead. It's chief is chief of the port chief, police. Chief of the port police. Yes, since the chief of the port police is here, maybe he could do an investigation. I've come before this panel more than one time, when you had the harbor commissioners here, and they were talking about changes and uh, the fact that there was ninety million dollars allocated for a mobile scanning device for containers that they took off the table, but we never found out what the ninety million dollars went for. So maybe the chief of police could do it, open an investigation to find out where $90 million went that was allocated for this mobile 
container scanner. He gave a, he's got to let us know. You let us know in a month or sooner. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Okay. We're Safe now. Safe travels, Chief. Uh, yes. Commissioner. Sorry I missed you, you know. It's okay. This time of day, the gridlock's worse than later, so it, it took me an hour to get here. I just want to make sure that uh, on the convention center, um, you know, I want to have a conference center near LAX. Uh, we're all, the three of us on this committee, are totally excited about it. Uh, and the executive directors talked about it at length, and we used the phrase, an incubation uh, uh, opportunity for new business. You know, people come to LAX, and they go to those hotels, mm -hmm. and then they fly out. I want it to be a destination spot. We've looked at a facility that could potentially be converted to it if things go well. It's really exciting. It's really moving along the right way. The bid is involved. What's your take on a conference center on Century Boulevard? Uh, <laughs> we just got them approved. We, we just got them approved. I know that, but I wasn't here. But I, uh, did you already yes, ask? Yes, she did. Oh. She, was, she was watching out for you. She, so, so give me your quick answer. because My I'm quick here. answer was I think we need to look at all the possibilities of bringing more people to the city and bringing more money into the city. And I think whatever options we can bring, let, let's look at them and make them a real possibility. Okay, because there's a budget rent a car location there that we know that we could maybe flop, uh, swip, switch out and mm -hmm. people could walk from the hotels mm -hmm. to it and we could actually have a more vibrant Century Boulevard. I, I think that's one of the most exciting things, not only about the convention center currently with LA Live and becoming uh, a vibrant part of the city, is I, I think having, lo I think the biggest uh, interest to me is bringing a uh, new vitality to certain areas that haven't had them for a while. And LAX, it, you know, it, it's hotels and it's in the airport, so why not try to make it more so? So now you have unanimous. Cars, when, when you're not here, I ask about the conference center at LAX, and I hope when I'm not here, you ask I'll about the mini back. conference Please. center down on the water. Fact, and, I and when I'm here, I ask about the <laughs> harbor, the airport, and the valley. Okay, well, you're awesome. You guys have uh, each other's back. We backs. got it. Okay, yeah. well, we got okay, the cities you. back. Now right. you got unanimous. Unanimous. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Look forward to your work. Okay. Appreciate thank it. You. Um, now we're going to take item two, and um, I thought we might have the public hearing piece uh, on this item first, <laughs> and then we'll have the convention center staff uh, give their report. Is that all right yes. with everybody? Under item two, we have the convention center department general manager and others who will report on um, current working conditions uh, involving the food service workers at Los Angeles Convention Center. Right, and so I have cards um, for Juanito Sanchez, Sharon Simmons, Sandy Richards, Kristen Reed, Reed and Arnold Sachs. <clears throat> so come up in that order. Yeah, you can all come up uh, as many as, as you, well, there's three microphones. Morning. <coughs> I'm going to be translating for him. Okay. He's going to speak in Spanish. All right. Oh, buenos días. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Juan Sanchez. Good morning, Trabajo council members. My name is Juan Sanchez. Para después de cada este anunciado para que puedan todos. Of course, we got the buenos días. Mi nombre es Juan. We at least we, we know that. Okay. You're very good. Yeah. I've worked at the convention center for more than 27 years. Soy mesero y capitán de meseros de banquetes. I'm a waiter and a captain. Estoy aquí porque hace más de dos años que no tenemos contrato, perdón, con Aramark. I'm here because for over two years now we have had no contract with Aramark. Yo tengo diabetes por más de 12 años. I've had diabetes for more than 12 years. Uh, la compañía se niega a darnos un plan médico, seguir continuando con el plan médico, perdón. The company is now refusing to continue paying into the health insurance plan. Para mí es muy importante porque yo pago muchas medicinas y tengo que ver especialistas. My health care is very important to me because I take a lot of different kinds of medication and I see a lot of different specialists. <coughs> yo en lo personal tengo a mi madre en México que tiene dos años con embolia. Personally, I have my mom in Mexico who two years ago suffered a stroke. Uh, mi hermano y yo le solventamos todos los gastos para, pues, para que ella pueda seguir todavía en vida. 
me and my brother, we support her and, and carry all of her expenses so mm. that she can basically stay alive, send her wow. money for her medication. Si a la mar no, no nos da el plan médico que yo necesito, entonces estoy en, si pago medicinas de mi madre o mis, pago mis medicinas. If Airmark refuses to pay our health care, I would have to make a choice between buying my own medication <coughs> and my mother's. Yo he dejado más de 27 años mi vida, parte en el Convention Center. Y no es justo que ahora que yo necesito más este plan médico se nos niegue. I've left over 27 years of my life at the Convention Center, and it is not fair that at the time in my life when I most need my insurance, they would deny it to me. Por eso estoy aquí para pedir la ayuda de ustedes. And that's why I'm here to ask for your support. Good morning, council members. My name is Sharon Simmons. I work at the Los Angeles Convention Center, and it is a, a pleasure being here this morning. Excuse me, I am nervous, okay? For the past 13 years, I have been employed with Airmark at the Los Angeles Convention Center as a cook slash pantry. And it has given me an opportunity to meet different people and expand my culinary skills and to represent Los Angeles. Unfortunately, for the last two years, we have been working without a contract and a raise. Aramart has not increased a contribution to our health plan, which is very vital to each and every one of mm -hmm. us. This Juan is a coworker of mine. 95 when I started, I was much younger. Preparing food for thousands of people standing on cement becomes wear and tear on your body. I do enjoy my work. I am a single mother raising my deceased son's child. Mm -hmm. I am also putting a son through college. If we lose our health care, what will we do with the cost of living rising? Mm -hmm. Come out of our pocket without a raise? Mm -hmm. Depend on Medi-Cal? We'll be in trouble. Mm -hmm. I'm here this morning to ask you to demand Airmark to treat each worker as human being and respect. And hopefully, out of this meeting, we will get something positive because I do need the raise, most definitely the Medicare. Hmm. Excuse me, my medical health plan. It is very important to me to have a doctor that knows something about me personally than to go to a doctor that knows nothing about me. I thank you very much for hearing me this morning. Thank, thank you, thank Sharon, you. for being here. You're welcome. Very articulate. Good morning, Madam Chairwoman and fellow council members. My name is Sandy Richards. I'm the pastor of Historic First Methodist, really close to uh, the LA Live. We're, we're right there in the corner of Flower and Olympic, and I am a proud resident of your district, Mr. LaVange. I live in Brookside. So I'm thrilled to be here before you, um, and thank you for your service to our city. I know that you bring your hearts and minds to everything. So I'm here this morning as an advocate for fairness for each and every resident of the city. As you know, it's very expensive to live in Los Angeles and its environs. It's very expensive to pay for anything. We know that uh, companies feel squeezes, but they often look at wages as just a bottom line. And I, I implore you as, as our council members, as our representatives, to think about the wage line item as people in the city. Um, Aramark is uh, not coming to the table with the workers. It's two years without a contract. They need a contract. Mm -hmm. um, and. I think the reason we're here this morning is because we know this is about a city contract. We know this is about the convention center, which we are also proud of. And these people have represented our city, and they will continue to with pride. And we need to make sure that they don't come to work feeling stressed and pressured because we, as uh, residents and council members of the city, have not demanded fairness from the people that we contract from. I know that you are all in support of living wages, that you are in support of dignity for all people, and that you are as proud of the city and its workers as you are of the corporations who do business here. And so I just, um, I know that you will bring your conscience to the table as long as well as your, you know, your red pencils that, that make all the totals for everything, and that, um, that you will hold Aramark to a standard of decency that we all um, think is important. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, my name is Kristen Rieg and I'm a staff director representing the food service workers um, 
for Unite Here Local 11, I'm sure um, we're all very familiar with the, the hotel campaigns, but we also have a large number of food service workers um, here in LA and Orange County. Um, and we're here today because the workers at the convention center really, um, it, it, it's come to a point where the workers just can't wait any longer. Um, uh, Juanito, Sharon, um, and all these different, um, their coworkers have not received raises for over two years. Um, and they're coming to you and because we know that you and your colleagues can make a difference for them and for their families. Um, so and these are not workers that are making uh, large amounts of money, large salaries. You know, they make $8 an hour um, with a service charge, you know, $10, $12 an hour. But we're not talking about, um, it's very modest what we're asking for in terms of wages um, and also the health benefits, right? We're asking to maintain what they currently have. Um, and these are not, it's not like an exorbitant, luxurious health plan, but we're, we're asking that people um, have a health plan that will, they'll be able to sustain mm -hmm. their families on. Um, and, you know, this is a very difficult economic environment right now. Um, people are struggling. Mm -hmm. And um, they expect that, and I, I think this is fair, right, that, that the city leaders that have supported, you know, workers in many other situations can really um, support them and make sure that Aramark does the right thing. Um, you know, there's, Aramark is one of the largest food service companies in the world. And they make $12 billion was their profit last year. Um, so they can afford to treat these workers fairly. And um, I think that, you know, especially in these economic times, it's really important to make sure that this does happen for them. And the workers really stuck through the convention center when there were not many conventions over the last yeah, years. Now cool. that the business is actually coming back and, and, you know, projected to be pretty good in terms of numbers of conventions in the coming years, um, the workers shouldn't be left out of that either. Um, so we're, we're urging the council to let Aramark know they should treat the workers fairly and do the right thing by them. So thank you. Thank you. Um, did we get everybody? Juanito, Sharon, Sandy, Kristen, and Arnold. Um, well, this is when I'm having public comment right now. Okay, I, I, I move that Arnold take a pass on this if you want. Let's hear from the general manager, okay, because I want to be able to vote on this. Okay. So, uh, It'd be good. Thank you. I got it. I understand. Miss Hahn runs the committee. Yeah, that's when we were having public comment, so. Good morning. Good morning. Puri Abbasi, General Manager, CEO of the Convention Center. I'm joined by Philip Hill, uh, Assistant General Manager and Chief Operating Officer of the Convention Center. Um, if, if I may begin right. on this issue. Um, I have come before this committee, before the council, and before the public in, uh, at large, and many times said that, uh, made the statement, and it's a, a true statement as it was then, as it is now, that the backbone of the convention center is the women and women of the convention center. We are blessed to have a great group of people, not only the people that sit behind me, but all the <clears throat> over 2,000 part-time and full-time employees of the convention center that uh, represent this great city. And I think over the past few years, especially the past three years, they've done a monumental job. Uh, the welfare, uh, health, uh, and uh, overall uh, work environment of all the employees of the convention center, not just limited to food services employees, is of monumental importance to me. The contract negotiations that have come before you and the comments that have been made uh, are uh, based on a, um, ongoing negotiations between Airmark, which is our food services provider, and the labor union representing the food services workers at the convention center. Um, I l would like to make a distinction as to uh, the type of contract that the uh, city of Los Angeles through the convention center has with Airmark. It is a management fee contract, a management fee contract means that the uh, bottom line figures, whether they're losses, profit, costs, uh, are actually at the, with the convention center and not with Airmark. Um, I am very, very sensitive uh, to making sure that as com uh, negotiations move forward, that they're equitable in terms of the uh, employees of the convention center, because again, we observe all of them and you can ask every single one that is here. In my statements at the employee meeting, we are really a family. And it is important for us to make sure that all the members of the family are treated correctly. However, um, the economic conditions, the demands on the convention center in terms of being a self-reliant uh, enterprise are also extremely important. And it is uh, our responsibility to make sure that the right balance 
is provided. Let me, let me just uh, ask a, a couple of questions. I mean, um, and I think one of the speakers talked about how the workers have really been loyal to the convention center, and even when there were thin times, and Same you know, it, it's. I remember reports saying that we weren't doing the bookings mm -hmm. we needed to do, uh, but the last time you came before us, you pretty much were painting a different picture of what was going on at the convention center. And would you um, agree that we're, we've got more bookings, uh, we're, we're doing better uh, yeah. than we were in the past? Uh, certainly. Uh, we ended, and uh, we will have a report before this committee on the uh, end of the last fiscal year. Uh, we have ended three years that we have operated in the black. Uh, right, so we, we're turn, we, we've time. turned a profit. Certainly, certainly. It, it was uh, extremely difficult last year, and we mm -hmm. did that through conscious cost right. cutting at various areas. Right. But again, my commitment to you and the council and the uh, residents of the city is to continue to run in the black. Right. So we have to be extremely. So we've, we've had, but we've had a record uh, bookings and conventions, uh, a record number. B bookings for future years, with right? It, yes. Um, and we know LA Live is is set to open. That will bring. I, I think my point is, things are turning around. I mean, yes. we have got a very exciting downtown LA. We've, we're attracting more tourists. We've got more stuff going on at the convention center. Um, we're really kind of focusing in a way that we've never focused before, in my opinion, on what's going on at the convention center and how that impacts our general fund in the city. We know that when tourism increases, when you have conventions, when you have bookings, that's money that comes into our general fund. And we're you know, looking at a, another $400 million shortfall next year. So um, here's my concern. My concern is these workers um, have not had a contract for two years. That troubles me. Um, and it seems to me this would be the worst time to have any kind of um, disruption. Uh, a, a labor dispute. Th this is just not the time we want to have a labor dispute. And, uh, you know, it seems like, um, you know, what, what they're asking for is extremely reasonable, fair, um, you know, a decent wage, maintaining health benefits. And the piece that uh, always troubles me is that service charge. And I, I don't know if you're aware um, that the increase in service charge doesn't necessarily go to the workers. And we had that same issue with our hotel workers. And I think most customers that pay this increase in service charge are assuming that it's going to the people who are doing the work. Mm -hmm. And most people feel OK about paying a service yes. charge. They don't like it. But it sounds like Aramark increased the service charge by 2%, and yet it didn't necessarily flow to the workers. So those are the kind of issues that bother me yes. as a policymaker. Yes. And it bothers me for the, the um, effect it might have on, on tourists. Tourists come in our city and they go, gee, you know, we, we were charged an extra 2% on the service charge and found out that it didn't go to these wonderful people mm -hmm. who were actually doing the work. And I always I always compare our our, our workers, whether it's at the hotels, next to LAX or at the convention center. The, these folks are our are, are face of hospitality. No question about it. And, you know, sometimes it's not just about the state-of-the-art facility why people come back and mm -hmm. book their, their, their conventions. Uh, it's the people Certainly, that no serve them. And if they get a good feeling and a good, good service, they'll, they'll want to come back. We can do all we want to improve, you know, the facility, new paint, new carpeting, mm -hmm. new, but it's the people. Certainly. That that give um, you know out of towners that feeling that Los Angeles is a good place to come. So I'm very concerned, uh, and what I'd obviously like to see is you know both sides go back to the table uh, and just want to make sure uh, that you're encouraging Airmark to go to the table, negotiate in good faith. But I also want to say that oh, when is their contract up? By the way, Airmark. Uh, 2000, end of 2009, December 31st, 2009. So the end of next year, their contract is up. And I want you to know that, you know, when we look at renewing contracts mm -hmm. for, for contractors out there, I know I do, and I think I have colleagues on the city council that also look at responsible contractors. We want to do business in the city with contractors who treat their workers 
decently, fairly, with dignity, uh, and um, you know, provide the kind of benefits that will honor the great workers, particularly those who have been so loyal to the convention center. So that's my word to everyone. Let's uh, hopefully everybody goes back to the table and right. negotiates in good faith. But we look when the, when their contract comes up for renewal in 09, I hope those are the kinds of things that we all look at, whether they have been treating their workers uh, with respect Certainly. and dignity. Certainly. So. Uh, Madam Chair, I assure you, uh, again, uh, I have encouraged both sides uh, as a third party, actually, in these negotiations to uh, negotiate in good faith. Good. There is a series of negotiations that are going to be held next week uh, okay. between the two sides. So I'm looking for both of them to come to the table and look at the realities of the environment that we are working in cu currently. And uh, I think there are many uh, points that we can reach agreement Good. on. Good, because uh, it's, it's clear to me that Aramark has a lucrative contract and you know the workers are, have really very modest goals. Right. Fair wage increase, preserve health and welfare, and a share of the increases of the service charge. Mm -hmm. That That's mm -hmm. just goes to basic uh, dignity, in my, in my opinion. Uh, if you're doing the work, you, you should get the service charge. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, let me, let me get a better understanding of this. Is Airmark in the room? No. Okay. Why aren't we, did, we did invite them. I understand. We, we Why aren't they in the room? Uh, the president of Airmark that actually is uh, um, responsible for pointing some of these discussions forward was not available. Okay. The second question is, Airmark is just the, the middleman on this, correct? That's true. <clears throat> They're not in charge of this wages. They're not in charge of the health benefits. You are. That's true. So it has nothing to do with them except you're giving them how much a year to manage the project? It comes down to about um, half a million dollars a year on management fee. That's so they get a half a million a year management fees to manage your workers and you make the decision with your operation as to what the workers make and what their benefits are? Um, up to a point, obviously, it, it is a national contract that deals uh, that food services employees deal with, and Airmark is a national company. But um, to break it down to simple terms, it's, yes, you're correct. Okay. So when I hear somebody say, "Oh, they make 12 billion a year profit," it has nothing to That's do nothing. with the That's convention center. That's it has nothing to do with us. That's correct. Okay. So what has to do with us is our bottom line with the convention center and what we, meaning you want to pay or think you can pay or should pay with the bottom line being what it is. So it's a phony baloney going after Airmark, correct? Okay. So what we need to really talk about is what do we pay our workers, we, the city, and what health benefits we give them. That's great. Okay. So forget about them. They're not the story. The story is they're just the managing partner of our operation. And if you like their management or not like their management, that's not the issue. The issue is do the workers get more health care, better wages, better situation. Okay. So when you come back with your report, um, you're going to look at how we, as a city, uh, pay them more money or give them better health care. Mm -hmm. So this strike business or our mark, that's just a uh, paper tiger. That might be a national issue or, mm -hmm. or a political issue. But it's, a, it's an issue between you and us. That's correct. Okay. Just so we're on the record here, folks. The real story is uh, this is a management team. They do what they're told. If we as a city want to pay you more health care benefits, we want to pay you more wages, they're just administering it. So the bad guy is, there's no bad guy in the room. There's just a discussion among the city What about family. the service charge? Who is responsible Thanks. for increasing the service charge? Uh, the service charge, actually, we have a discussion with, uh, again, our food services uh, management team, Aramark, and then uh, mm -hmm. we agree on the service charges to be increased based on a comparison to what other facilities are And did are you charging. know that the charges were not being, were not being passed on to the workers? Um, actually, um, no, because uh, a big portion of it is. Um, they ate, for example, on one of the uh, tables that were provided to the committee, there was a server, there was a, what was the server, there was a 
$8 quoted as far as the uh, yeah. hourly rate for a server at the convention center. We went back and looked at the books, and uh, the staff shares 86% of the service charge. So the actual pay for a server at the convention center, this is going back to the payroll, is close to $30.79. So because the, the, report, the report I said, had said that Airmark increased the service charge by 2% and workers do not receive any portion of that increase. Because already 86% of the 17% it does go to the workers. We, we are one of the facilities that actually provides a big, big portion of the service charge that goes to the uh, food services employees currently. So the 2% was just to, uh, it was, I think, increased from 7 to 19% and the increase was to cover the overhead charges. But already, out of the 17%, 86% of it does go to the employees. And as far as the, and uh, Philip has been more uh, involved in terms of the overall mechanics of the negotiations. I'm very concerned, regardless of, you know, position I hold in the city in regards to the welfare and benefits and uh, overall insu health insurance. And I think we, we will re uh, reach agreement on that. Um, very confident of that. Um, and as Councilmember Rosenthal pointed out, the wage increases uh, obviously is a negotiation process, and we will go back and forth and make the right decisions. But you know me by now very well. I think, other than being Angelina and being proud of the Los Angeles Convention Center, I'm very much in tuned and appreciative of the work. Is that it true that they does. have not had a, a, a wage increase uh, Philip, if you want to in two years? Okay. Yes, I don't believe, I believe the contract about two years ago that expired, we have a timeline we won't go into here about from one side at least how the, the discussions have been going back and forth. Have they had an increase in two years? I do not believe so. Right, well, yeah. so it's hard for me to hear you say on one hand you, you care about the welfare of the workers mm -hmm. and then to know that they have not had an increase. I don't know anybody else in the city who hasn't had an increase for two years. Um. So I don't see how you can say on one hand, we know you and you care about their welfare when, when they're saying they haven't had an increase in two years. And, uh, we can go back and forth on the uh, mechanics of it. The uh, contract did expire two years ago. However, the negotiating union wanted to look at negotiating this on a national basis when the uh, hotel contracts expire. That's why uh, for a year even negotiations were halted, not, not by uh, our food services management team, but uh, by the negotiating team. And then uh, we have a chronology of you know, going back and forth on the negotiations. So uh, from what I've seen. That what's, your, what's your sense of how, of how this gets resolved? I believe and when? I believe there are th two, two major uh, issues outstanding. One is wage increases and the other is health and welfare. I believe on health and welfare we are very close to reach agreement. Uh, I believe on the wages uh, we have to be cognizant of the economic environment we are in and the bottom line. The, there, is, there has to be flexibility on both sides. Uh, I feel uh, past next week when, uh, again, the, the final, and uh, we have been through food, food services um, and the union have brought a mediator in. Mm -hmm. So we are in mediation right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm positive that we'll reach, you know, a level that is equitable to both sides. Uh, obviously, you know, I've been part of many labor negotiations. And uh, as we move forward, we, there, there's a request, obviously, maybe to increase wages by a certain percentage. Those might not be viable based on the bottom line, but there, is, there are numbers that are viable, and I think we'll reach those. Uh, what I'm requesting uh, the union to do, and I did a letter, actually, I wrote a letter to both the union and to, through Airmark, uh, indicating that, as Councilmember Rosenthal uh, in indicated, the performance of food services at the convention center is extremely important. Mm -hmm. It's what drives business, mm -hmm. especially convention business. Mm -hmm. uh, if How they many do conventions not do we have between now and the end of the year? We should have another um, 10 conventions coming in. Last year we had 14 conventions. We hosted 14. This year we're looking between 16 and 18 I conventions. What the numbers that we, we've reported on also has to do with bookings for all future years. So those are the numbers that are hard. Yes. Ms. Han, I support the further trying to resolve the opportunity to help people, which is so key 
and I know you have a balancing act. I also want to say, too, I talked to someone who was very involved, and what people may do in the future to do the crisis we're in, then you may call, take a penalty, and cancel. So as bright as we may think the future may be, exactly. people may cancel the party, saying we're not coming to Los Angeles for other economic reasons. So we have a big challenge here. Uh, you know, somehow we could get everybody together. I think it would be helpful. If you would excuse me. Yes. Okay, thank yes. you. But also we're very concerned any kind of a, a disruption uh, in good. the workforce would also cause, I would think, uh, some anxiety out there with people booking conventions. No question. They want to make sure that we've got uh, our workforce is intact and, you know, there will be no disruption to, to their convention or to their services. So, so I'm more concerned about that as we're coming into the holidays and uh, we've got a lot of activity com going on at the convention center. And so we urge both sides to get back to the table, negotiate in good faith and do what's right um, for really for, for these workers. These workers are, I, I believe, the heart and soul of the convention center. No question about it. I believe so. Okay, just to finish my point, would you uh, analyze this and next time you come back, uh, tell us about these numbers from your perspective yes. so that we, we hear your point of view. And my last question would be, uh, what are the other potential uses for the money that could be used to pay the food workers higher wages? I know that's the balancing act, and it's a city act. It's not an airmark. Let's be clear about it. They're just your intermediary. You're the one who's going to make the decision if they get more health care benefits or if their wages go up. It is definitely going to be dependent on how the city council and the mayor decide to formulate a future year's budget. The current year budget, uh, $1.7 million of the revenues of the convention center came out of the convention center and it's going to the general fund of the city because of the needs that the city has. Uh, those monies could have been spent on many various things. Uh, Partially, uh, you know, some, some of the items that you're talking about, certainly, but also uh, revamping of the convention center and bringing it to where it should be in comparison to where we are with LA Live. So, again, that decision is definitely going to be uh, a decision, collective decision, uh, for all expenditures of the convention center, including, you know, wages of our employees uh, and uh, our number of part-time employees that we have and the contractor employees is going to be dependent on how we move forward through the budget process this year for 2009-2010 fiscal year. The convention center, as I was very, very vocal and I, I spoke at the Budget and Finance Committee about this, needs to be uh, needs to continue to work independently to, to operate a fiscally sol solvent enterprise. Taking monies away from the convention center and putting it back into the city's general fund might address short-term issues, it will not address long-term issues. And um, I understand the challenges you all face, uh, I'm keenly uh, aware of it. But those decisions have repercussions, uh, we all know. Now, my thing is to make sure, because Regardless of all of this, I've committed to run the convention center in the black, and I'll be true to that commitment. Right. What, what I want to make sure is clear, because I'm on the budget committee, too, yes. and, and as Ms. Hahn said, clearly uh, we have challenges ahead of us. Again, as she mentioned, potentially another $400 million shortfall. How many workers are impacted by, by this uh, relationship as service workers? How many are we talking about? We, we're talking about between full-time and part-time workers at the food services, yeah. uh, somewhere between 200 to 300. Okay, so we're talking about two to 300 people that are sitting here in the room and these folks are representing them as well. Okay, where I'm coming from, and I'm on the budget committee, I would rather see less money come to the general fund. 1.7 million is what you give us now. We, we need it desperately for cops and fire and all of the other issues. I don't want to see it at the expense of the workers that are sitting here in the room. Their living wage slash health benefits are critical not only for their lives, but for the attitude at that convention center that brings in the overall robustity. Because it isn't just the profit you make there. It's the multiplier effect in the right. overall economy. So, right. so know this. I am a champion. Uh, for the wages and the health benefits uh, for those 300 folks who are at the convention center. And if it means less money coming from you to the general fund because they're getting their health benefits and their, their wages, um, I would love for you to make sure you make that clear when you go through the budget process. The mayor should be engaged 
since you report to him in this issue as well. Do you rob Peter to pay Paul or not? Or who do you take care of? These are the frontline troops. They're the ones who are the, the, the customer relations people. They're the ones that give you the good feeling about coming back to LA. So I don't want to cut my nose to spite my face. So when that process develops, please let us know. Let the mayor know too, because he's the one who wants to squeeze everywhere in a 5% cut here and a 10% cut there. Certain things he should let the goose continue to lay those golden eggs, okay, which is what those 300 folks do there. So I look forward to when you make those presentations and you go into the discussions that you have that. And I don't want to see this air mark as this uh, buffoon when it's not even playing in this play. It might be playing in other parts of the country as an issue, but you're the one and our city and our budget needs are the big issue. Sir. Am I right on that? I, I just want to make call. sure I'm saying the yes. right thing. Well, I, I mean, I think the key is, as we said, what you, what you, sh your job is to book as many conventions as you can because the tourists that come into Los Angeles, a 4% increase in tourism equals $12 million to our general fund. Certainly. We know that. So, you know, don't uh, skimp on paying the workers and use the excuse that you're having to give money to, to the general fund. You do your job by booking more conventions, and we get money in our general fund, and then everybody's happy, and we pay our workers what they deserve. Certainly. Thank you. Okay. So that's, uh, we just, that was uh, just um, a presentation. We can take no action at this time. Yeah, and the only thing I want to make sure the union folks know is if you think your energy is going to create another dynamic, like a potential strike, please come back to us first. We don't want to, we don't want to hurt um, our convention center, which is a money generating and a multiplier effect for the city. Let's work together on that, but do keep us in the loop. And I really appreciate you coming last week and raising the energy level so the awareness could come before this committee. I'd like, to add, I'd like to add one more thing also, please, just very quickly. Um, number one, we definitely appreciate the opportunity to come and speak for you. We are encouraging both sides to work in good faith. Um, but something you, it's important to know, and Priya mentioned, I want to reiterate it. The people that are in these front three rows are outstanding. We think the highest of them, and they are a key, a key part of the family. Um, they are really that good. So we are definitely there to help support them and help this whole machine move forward. But um, we don't want to forget the people side. This is really a fabulous team you're looking at. And it represents a component of the whole convention center family, but we think the highest of them. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're on to item three, and it's 10 till 10. Thank you for coming. Yes, uh, we did three. That was the penalties for tariff violations. So we'll do four now. Do you want to do four? Um, oh, we already did three? That was the penalty. Oh, that's right. Okay, four. Under, out of order. Under item four, the Board of Harbor Commissioners submits for approval program agreement number 082716 with Daimler Truck Financial to serve as the financial services entity for the clean truck program to fund and administer the acquisition of clean trucks or retrofitting equipment through subsidized leases or loans. Um, in this, for this item, the mayor chose not to request a CAO report um, in order to, I believe, in order to expedite consideration of the agreement by council. Hi, Molly. Good morning. Um, Molly Campbell with the Port of Los Angeles. Um, as uh, has been outlined, this is the agreement before you were requesting approval is a three-year agreement, agreement with Daimler Truck Financial. Right. Um, given this economic climate, we're extremely anxious to be able to take care of a line of credit that they've extended for both to the Port of Los Angeles and the Port of Long Beach for up to a billion dollars to help finance what's a key component of our truck program, which ultimately to clean up the air is replacing those 16,000 trucks um, that services both ports. So how does this work? How This basically works like a loan. It's they're okay. going to serve as a bank for okay. both the ports of LA and Long Beach. It's two separate agreements, so mm -hmm. it's very distinct. Um, the way that their payments work is they provide uh, leases, which they could take some federal tax benefits in terms of depreciation credits that otherwise could not be given, and they pass that through in terms of savings to both the port as well as the licensed motor carriers. So ultimately, what we do is we're subsidizing the loans that these truckers or the licensed motor carriers get um, up to about 80%, and we pay Daimler. So we're really and using pay, their and funds. And you pay them back with the... It's interest. It's just like you but would. But I mean, no, it, we pay that back with the container fee? Correct. It's okay. three sources of funds that's coming to cover this. One, the $35 fee that we're implementing in terms of the clean truck 
fee. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the um, $98 million that's coming from CARB for both ports. Mm -hmm. And then the motor carriers themselves, it's actually paying part of that subsidy. So what we're doing is rather than the port front funding right. it, Daimler is funding it, we pay them monthly through um, the payments and they just um, peg it to an interest rate. What interest rate are they? The interest rate's actually very good. The interest rate itself is slightly under 5%. Um, there are additional ch um, costs that's built into that. We've pegged it to what's called a double A minus swap, and not to get complicated, it's just an independent benchmark so that we could all look at any given time to say, where is this rate standing? And then Daimler adds a percentage to that. So um, for the administration fee that's for, um, as part of this. And is any of this latest financial mess affecting this particular type of a deal? Well, one, we feel fortunate, again, to just even have um, the ability to have this line of credit. Daimler did release a couple days ago that they are making some changes within what's called their Sterling brand. That's one of the LNG trucks, um, and they're consolidating 3,200 jobs um, under that brand into another brand that they have, Freightliner. So they specifically are making some economic adjustments in terms of their company. But in terms of the port itself, um, I think the big story here is that because of the ability for the port to backstop this, that we're able to provide those loans and leases to people who otherwise may not be able to get it in this credit climate. And what type of uh, trucks will be um, available for this? There's several type of different types. Um, we have the two, the, you know, um, there are Freightliner, Mac, Volvo, Sterling, LNG, so and not just uh, Daimler trucks. No, not at all. No. In, in fact, Daimler was chosen totally independently of going through the process that we had when we picked the, the various trucks. So the um, licensed motor carriers will have a choice in terms of selecting, I believe it's about eight different types, but don't quote me on that, but there are several for them to choose from. And are we are good on the, the stock of all these trucks? I mean, we're ready to... We're ready to so, go. We did some pre-ordering okay. just because we were a little nervous before yeah. the program got going just right. to make sure that we had. So we're in good shape. Right. The key here now is just to get it out to... Um, and our, uh, what's the mix between just cleaner diesel versus alternative fuel? What we're doing is offering both. And right now the mix just in terms of the are folks... Are we getting are, any, any, any incentive for the alternative fuel? As, we're, we're doing incentives for the entire thing, right, and, but, but there's a greater incentive actually for um, LNG because they are exempted from the fees completely. Okay. Instead of paying the $35 fee, if you have an alternative fuel vehicle, you're exempted. And that is okay. very meaningful over the life of the concession. Okay. Um, in addition to that, we at the Port of LA, um, is we're providing $20,000 for those companies bringing 2007 compliant vehicles um, that are already existing and so that's money that in addition to that, that so we're what do we think providing. the mix will be you know we're hoping it will be 50 50 but we don't know right now See, it looks I would, like I would be right I would hope more it would be more, I would hope it would be not even yeah. 50 50 yeah. I would, I would yeah. hope it'd be much more of the alternative fuel we'd like to push that as much as we can and I think that we've done some things in terms of the incentive but I, I think we still have a few challenges um, not just in terms of the fuel but just the the, the cost that's associated with it the are the, those trucks more expensive they are more expensive how much more expensive um, a little under a hundred thousand for the diesel versus about a hundred sixty thousand for the um, LNG but the subsidy is also higher we're providing a um, higher subsidy on the LNG to incentivize so that you're, as well. So you're providing a higher subsidy plus plus the, the no exemption, fees. correct? So, that's so we're doing everything we can to try and push the alternative fuel. And I don't want to say LNG because certainly it's anything right that's Natural, um, um, exactly right. And our electric trucks are they? There's, it's still being What's tested. What's the future for our electric trucks? Well, we're hoping, you know, we, we have gone out with our prototype as this um, council, I think, uh, right. took action on. Right. And um, they're still testing it within the terminals now. So we're hoping that will be a very positive okay. thing. No, great. Okay, good. Uh, so we'll move to approve uh, this uh, agreement. With great. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, this is in council today. Okay. Item five. Under item five, the Board of Harbor Commissioners submits for approval mm -hmm. uh, the First Amendment to Foreign Trade Zone Subzone Operating Agreement number 1995 with Conoco Phillips Company for operation of oil refining and storage facilities at Subzone C, 
This subzone consists of four separate sites uh, located in the uh, Port of Los Angeles, City of Carson, uh, Wilmington, and City of Torrance, totaling seven. You know, I wouldn't mind taking all acres. four of these. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> I think Our, just as a point of correction, item five as well as item nine um, were going to be continued because the original agreement itself was not approved. Is, is that correct? This, the CAO and City Attorney are recommending that we hold item five and nine because the original agreements were not forwarded to council for approval and should have been. Okay. So, um, All right, we'll hold. So we'll make those corrections. Okay, and we'll take the other two. Great. Uh, All right. We've got a motion to approve them. Okay, so thank so. you. Okay. Done. Done. Um, six, seven, and eight, you're approving? Yes. Okay. You, yes. Thank you. Okay, um, and that's it. I don't have, oh, wait. Speaker's cards. Thank you. Okay, we have Fred Muir as a public comment, Arnold Sachs, and Chuck Tenen. Thank you. Hi, Fred. I'll make it fast and make it fast. Hello, Fred. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Fred Muir, and I'm here today, <coughs> pardon me, representing the Step Up Coalition, which is a group of utilities, environmentalists, fire safety advocates, and others who support the adoption of clean electric transformer technology. Step Up advocates for the adoption of a proven transformer coolant material. FR3, which is biodegradable, sustainable, and with a smaller carbon footprint than existing and aging transformer technology now used by the LA DWP. The reason I'm appearing before your committee today is because we know you have a great interest in the environment at the Port of Los Angeles and for our whole region, and there was a great opportunity before us. The Port is in the midst of one of the most important electric infrastructure projects in the city's history, and that is the advent of cold ironing or amping at the port, which will allow ships to, at birth to plug into the electric grid and shut down their polluting engines. Right. Incorporating a biodegradable, sustainable, non-toxic FR3 coolant into the port's electric infrastructure program could immediately improve the port's total carbon footprint, reduce fire danger significantly. So how does, this, how does that costs. work? It's a different kind of um, fluid that they use inside these transformers. Some are huge transformers like you would have at the port. Other ones are like on the power poles. Right. And the coolant they use inside right now is a petroleum-based coolant. Right, and they catch it's on It's toxic fire. and it's very foul stuff and it and tends they catch to on fire. Yeah. And catches fire. And we have several hundred right. every year in LA. Right. Which are very expensive. Okay. And obviously dangerous for city workers. FR3 is a soy-based coolant. It's sustainable. It's non-toxic. And they like it in marine environments like the port because you spill it in the water and it doesn't harm the wildlife. You can spill it in your aquarium. Are we so using it anywhere right now? The port, uh, the LADWP is currently having a study of FR3. They are using it in a pilot, a very small pilot, at the port, oh. in part because it's good in marine right. environments. What um, your colleagues on the Energy and Environment Committee have asked the, six months ago, asked the DWP for a study that is supposed to be due the end of this month. Okay. I wanted to bring it to your attention okay, as well. well, well we'd, we'd like your committee to, to review this okay. study as okay. well and to encourage the port okay. to look at this study and to encourage the port to consider using FR3 in any of the electrical facilities that are going in there in support of amping and, and all the other construction that's going on down there. Good. Thank you, Fred, for Thank bringing that to much. our attention. We'll, um, we'll, uh, we'll introduce a motion asking for this committee to look at that report as well. If I want to interact with um, mm -hmm. Alex Fay there, um, give, us, give us some more insight into okay. We look forward to that. I have some informational material okay. on the Step Up Coalition, which is a oh. national coalition, okay. as well as uh, FR3. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Arnold Sachs and Chuck Tennant. Come on, Chuck. You can come up. Yes, good morning. I can't good tell morning. you how irate I am about not being able to speak on item number three. The fact of the matter is you had five people come up here and talk about Aramac and, and a contract they had with Aramac. And in the report that came out, in the commentary, <coughs> Councilman Rosendahl said Aramac's not involved in it. It's the city, which is entirely different than what the people came up here to talk about. So that's why I asked to hear the report first and comment on the report. Given that opportunity, out the window. But anyway, I'm concerned about what's going on at LAX. Three billion, five billion, seven billion, nine billion, ten billion dollars for construction. Is there a price tag on this item? What is being built? What isn't being built? 
We're going to build a Mill City Concourse? No, we're going to revamp Tom Bradley Terminal. We don't know what's being built. But there's $10 billion on the table. In addition, the chairman of the Airport Commission sits on the advertising agency that's getting $60 million from the airport. It was in the newspaper. No conflict of interest. He's sitting on the non for non -prof, the nonprofit organization that's collecting the revenue for the airport advertising. No conflict of interest. Didn't we just have a problem with Jenny Marie Lindsay sitting in on hearings regarding a conflict of interest where first committee meeting she wasn't in, second committee meeting she was in, all of a sudden presto change of whammo shazam contract changes. Now we have the chairperson of the airport commission sitting on the not Pro, the for-profit agency that's collecting airport revenue for advertising. No problems here. Everything is copacetic. I'm still upset about that. Okay. Okay. Uh, good morning. Um, I wanted to bring up on Stop the Violence so that we can all live in peace. I just wanted to let you know, Janice, that my people have got it all lined up in the, in the lyrics, and Thursday we're going to get together and put some rough music so we can have it for the holidays. I was saddened to hear that only five people showed up for the Watts Choir rehearsal, but you know what? It's an opportunity for the community to make money to fund youth programs and send a message to this city to stop gang violence and encourage gang prevention so that kids have opportunities. Also, on Proposition 36, gosh, if Eric, Jan, and Bill, and Wendy, and Jack support it, they get over $2 million in contribution, campaign contributions. Why can't they give you $20,000 each for mailings to support your Proposition A? <laughs> uh, it's not a lot of money. And uh, another thing, uh, you know, an idea from uh, each city uh, neighborhood council, they each get 50000 a year. Uh, that, there's approximately 90 in the city. If they took 5000 of that, of the 90, and set it aside to hire planners to advise our neighborhood councils on their planning and development issues, it would be a good thing. And one final thing, the housing department is not being as responsive as they should to the people of the city. Oh, and another thing, I went to two three MLPA Marine Life Protection Act meetings and our state strongly indicated they want to control everything and take away as much recreational activities as they can that will damage and impact our recreational industry and our economy in Southern California and the city of Los Angeles needs to get involved to minimize it and I'd still like to have that 20-minute meeting with Janice with okay. some of the people that stand behind that. Yes. And Bill, take your kids fishing and follow in Jan Janice's footsteps. Thank you. <laughs> Can't we waive it from the committee? And just okay. Wait? Thank you uh, for being here. This meeting is adjourned. By the way, we we already spoke, we already spoke to your staff about the paparazzi thing. We, we weren't.